and Broad Street, where it is situated, was again once one of its main arteries leading up to the Bull's Head. In the early 60s, Thursday night at the Bull was practice night for the Sherry Singers. This is outside the old Bull's Head as it is today and some of its char outside character has been lost as you can see but through the marvel of this film which was taken nigh on 30 years ago you will be able to see some of the older characters so let us trigger the memory of yesteryear as once more we enter the bowl we held dear The cloth cap and scarves tell us Christmas is here with everyone happy and full of good cheer. And in the bull's head not an empty seat as everyone joined in the bull's weekly treat. And the domino, domino players had their regular places. Tis a joy once again to see their fond faces. To Mali and Albert and Kale showing his hand. If Yor would have seen him he would have been banned. They were only playing for a penny knock, but it was Yor who went round and had to take stock. While Maggie and Audrey were busy at the bar, ensuring that everyone had a full jar. Not only at Christmas, but each Thursday night was like common garden and a source of delight. There's Big Lloyd, a character and a half, the local king of the cloth cap and scarf. Now it's back to the singing and the joy that we got as we sit back remembering this wonderful lot. of the Foes Pavarotti. Howard, dear Howard. As we look back in life, there have been in everyone's life cause and reason for regret. But to the Rosites who frequented the ball, no one of them ever regretted having the friendships that we gained there. Friendships which have endured and lasted all life. The tenors on their feet singing away. Now there's a bass section, Bob, Albert and Ray, the likes of which I've not seen to this day. And then Alan Jeffries would show us his belly, not thinking that someday he'd be on the telly. It's the finest gathering that I've ever seen, Dennis Esso, Emma Ruin and Charlie Queen. John T.T. and Bill Pritchard and Eddie Swan, each one a fine singer to the last man. For each one at the bowl were close and fond buddies. Look out, it's our time. Now here come the buddies. But a mouthful of bread could not stop them from singing. Crumbs and all, twas delight that they would be bringing. As Maggie and Audrey and Yor wash the glasses, another day done, another night passes. 
And we are now left with but memories that we always will treasure for they'll never cease. And this fond glance at a happy past awakens those memories which will always last. Here we are at the resort town of Prestatin by the sea. Many happy memories here because it was at the Grand Hotel that we had the grandest night of our careers at the time. A glimpse at the past when our hearts were so full as we all got together in the days of the bowl in the Grand Hotel for a presentation by the cherry singers to Maggie and Yor for the joy they did bring us and after a hearty meal had been necked a night to remember which we'll never forget for Maggie and Yor and Audrey some bouquets to thank them for what they did in those days. And as our president, it was Yori's place to respond as he did in his humorous ways. I forget what, but he had something to say about that. Hello, here comes Jackie. He would be the first so he can go back to replenish his thirst for surgical gloves that he received to protect his fingers because he believed that he was a pianist and a player of notes, the Rose Liberace, or so he thought. There's Howard, who's everyone's favorite choice to sing with that wonderful tenor voice. There's Alan Jeffries getting his prize, a set of dolls which was very nice for Margaret, his wife, a mini ha ha from her gentle giant and our Hiawatha. See him now, you'd have to go very far for a nicer fellow than Glen Jack of Bar. It's Dennis who sang us the melody of love's last words spoken and his sherry. And now there's dear Graham who was everyone's friend and who started it all before his sad end. And there's Bill Pritchard, who would sing all day, but alas, like so many, has now passed away. There's Arthur, whose smile and youthful age made sure he was always the first on the stage. And Gwynvor, whose loyalty was ever ready, and who helped a great deal to keep the boat steady. Big Ray's contribution helped to make the show, with a voice and a talent that made it all glow. Bob Ellis, another wonderful bass whose voice more than earned him a worthy place. Aha, how but when? To our hide, Albert's age was quite a task, so the young ones presented him with a mask. A cute mask indeed, a pity he didn't know how to wear it. To us, our pianist was the best in the land, so for him, a miniature baby grand. Here comes David Gracie, who drove us around in any old vehicle that could be found. An excellent driver and a willing chap, so for him, a second hand, so chauffeur's cap. A scroll for Jock Valentine and a rosette for being the best fan one could ever get. He was the singers' as vice president and a character with humor which was heaven sent. And here's our conductor, dear John T.T. He was no Bobby Rawley, but believe you me, he was able to keep each one in his place. If not, he would clack you across the face. And now he was truly who is proud to recall that he played but a small part among three. We traveled a lot in those days. But amongst the best was a night that we spent 
at the Traveller's Rest. The classics and folk songs they would always sing, and for humour's sake they would do anything. On the piano himself, the Bono Maestro, the one and only Jackiso Tomoso. Off the cuff they'd perform an operatic mini, with excerpts from the opera Tutlanghini, and choosing to wear a borrowed skirt was a well-known soprano in a musical flirt. A prima donna who was international was Dame Howard Melba, who was truly sensational. And after the bedlam of the mad opera, back to normal with solos like Mavanwi and Thora, and here's a party well into the night. And after a couple in full vocal flight. It's lovely to see, to look and recall, Signor in his glory, in the midst of us all. Although we can't hear them, it's easy to tell by the joy on their faces that the song suits as well. sitting, some standing, some toing and throwing. Most good things come to an end and it passes as the staff start to clear and clean up the glasses. But what always remains are the memories of the staff for the tenth time shouting last orders please. Their ears still ringing with the sound of our songs and the hugging and kissing and the friendly so longs. And now it's time to say their good nights. And out to the car pack look back to the bull and even on that night though the bus was so full D.B. Greasy's van took the over spill and was ready to drive us home safely as we climbed Gutter Hill and arrived at the hose that hallowed place and the bull's head which gave us our happiest of days. The 
bless the days, bless the memories, long may they last.